Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, what are we going to be talking about? Well, I don't want to talk about the GSSR because I actually haven't done a video on it. That's a lie. I actually recorded a video on it yesterday, and then the audio got messed up, so I'm re-recording it. <laughs> so this will be my second time doing this again. But I wanted to talk about the GSSR because Anniversary should be here in two weeks, and I have not done a video talking about it. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to tell me what your plans are for the GSSR, and let's get into it. So, first things first, when is the GSSR actually going to be here? Well... The anniversary for Vago is typically during Anime Expo, and that's between the 1st to the 4th. It really kind of depends whenever Fago has its panel, that's when our anniversary is. And it's usually, usually right after that panel is done. Like, they show off all the cool stuff, there's usually maintenance, and then boom, we go into it, and then anniversary starts. So there you go. Two. How do I summon on the GSSR? First of all, you need to be using Paint Sade Quartz. That's the only way that you're going to be able to do it. You need 15, so it's less than that. And I think the cheapest way to get it, it costs around maybe 10 bucks. You can't, there's no like, the most, <laughs> I think the most expensive one to get it is, and not have to deal with the tiny one is like $29.99. The way that they do, you can't actually use all the free Sade Quartz. It's really weird. But the point is, is that you'd have to buy two of the smaller ones to get it for the cheapest value. Uh, if you are assuming uh, buying it. And how is the GSSR actually this year? So this year it's actually divided into two categories. Um, not two categories. Yes, typically two categories. One is the Knights class and the other one is the... I forgot the name of the other class that they typically call it. The Three Knights class and the Four Horsemen class. And typically with the Four Horsemen come the extras. And it's also divided by release time. Um, so when the actual units were released, that's when it is. And in this one, the, you will get a free 5-star of that year, and then also a free 4-star of that year, and then there are also going to be specifically some 3s from that year in there as well. Not to say you're guaranteed to get one of the limited 3s, it's just that they're going to be in the banner. So that's how they do it. Now let's look at the actual banners themselves. Um, there are a lot. There are... Uh, 10, 11, 12, 12 banners. So just to do a quick look, here they are. Here we go, banner two, banner three, banner four, banner five, banner six, banner seven, banner eight, banner nine, banner 10, banner 11, and banner 12. And you can only summon on one of these unless you get insanely lucky and summon uh, during a time where the GSSR is bugged and you can summon on the GSSR multiple times. I've only ever seen that happen once and it happened on the JP version of the game and it's never happened on NA. So let's go over these. I'm going to try and go over them uh, as best as I can. There's a lot of units on these and some of these are also varied. If you're someone who's just looking for the most generic of generic advice, I'll just give you that out right here right now. What is the best banner to actually summon on? Um, it's a tie between... And it's going to come with some caveats. This one is the straight out best if you have Castoria. And if you don't have Castoria, this is the best banner because it's a 1 in 5 chance of getting Castoria. Along with having Morgan, which is a good as a second choice. And it has 3 units that are okay to depending on how much you like them. And this one is the best banner if you have Castoria because it's a 1 in 4 chance of getting Arjuna Altar. And he'll be very good if you're also going for the Anniversary unit. Or maybe you already have the Anniversary unit and you're summoning on the GSSR after you get him. But because there's a Buster support as the main unit, this dude is one of the strongest Busters. Followed up by Morgan, who is the second for Buster. But she's in a different kind of like class. In terms of raw strength... He's stronger, and in terms of use of usability and some other factors, Morgan is. It's really weird. <laughs> uh, someone broke it down to me, but in terms of raw strength, Arjuna Alter is always going to be your guy. And then if you have both of those, I would say the next one is this one because it has a chance of Super Orion. And if you don't care about any of the units I just mentioned, it's literally whichever one has your favorite unit. So let's go into them. So we have Banner 1 here, which has Okita, Saber Nero, Saber Shiki. Uh, Gilgamesh, Skahawk, and Brynhildr. And then in terms of here, I'm only going to mention the limited ones. We have uh, Saber Altar, we have Gowin, we have Nero, we have... Uh, Lancelot is not limited. We have Tristan, we have uh, Li Xuin, 
We have uh, Edison, who is limited. I can't remember if... I want to say Helena is not. She is not. Okay, but I just had to be double sure on that one. Um, Medea Lily is 100% limited in some capacity. And I believe that is it for the four stars. <laughs> He's not limited, but I'm going to mention Heracles is on this banner. And the only reason I'm bringing it is because I'm pretty sure in the entire history of Fago, he has never had a solo rate up. <laughs> So, <laughs> he's very hard to get. They really don't want people having him. He's really good, though. And in terms of the three, which one of these are limited? It is Caster Coup, and it is um, Gilles de Reyes, the Caster version. And I believe that is it from looking at it. And the way... So, yeah, back to this banner for rest of the first one. And both of these you'll be able to get from either one of these if you're picking one of the two. Let's go back to the first one. The first one has a lot of fan favorites. It's got Okita, it's got Nero, it's got Skahawk, it's got Gilgamesh, it has Shiki. The only one here that doesn't have a huge following as far as I'm aware of is Brunhilder. And in terms of the overall quality, I think all these dudes are pretty solid. I think the one that ends up being the worst is probably Shiki, but that's because I'm not the biggest fan of death buffs on AoE. And the way that hers are applied are the old style. It's, like, it's not the new style, like Summer Kiara, who... You'll be able to get the MP gain from it first. I think she uses the old style, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, and it's also one hit. Or yeah, she was used. She was made in a different time. She needs probably a little bit more. But that's at least my assessment on it. If someone has a differing opinion, I'll gladly listen to it. <laughs> I've been wrong in the past. Just listen to anything I've ever said about uh, Tesla, everyone's favorite AOE archer, who is turns out one of the best AOE archers in the entire game. And aren't I stupid for not knowing Tesla? Anyway. Yep, so this one definitely is the one you would go for if you care about any of these units. None of them are as crazy breakout as the other ones that I've mentioned beforehand that I showed off beforehand. But I definitely really like Bride Nero. I think she's an interesting support slash attacker. She's one that can be super supportive, but also in a pinch, you can use her to attack yourself. And I actually have her, so I have a lot of reverence for her. Uh, Skahawk has... The only reason I don't use her nowadays is because she's NP10 and she already carries me. If I'm ever in trouble and I need a single target Lancer, I basically use her. And the rest of these units I don't have, so I can't speak too much of them. I can only say what I've heard from others. Okita is Okita, so she's well-loved and stuff like that. And let's move on to the next one. Next banner, this one has Iskandar, this one has Shuten, this one has Mysterious Heroin X, this one has Kintoki, this one has Raiko, this one has Amakasu... This one has Dantes, and this one has Jolter. And here's a... This, this banner just has too many dudes on it. This is the unfortunate about it. If you care about one unit in here particularly, it's a 1 in 8 chance of actually getting them, I believe. Yeah, 1 in 8, which is not good odds <laughs> at all. Like, I really care a lot about Kentucky and Raiko on here, because I don't, I'm missing them, and I would really like to have them. But a 1 in 8 chance in Raiko is just too high of blood, especially with how many misses are on here. Um, I have a Skandar, I have Shudan, I really like them, um, but they're pro probably, as, uh, for Skandar specifically, he's really good at dealing pure damage, but I feel like he's missing a little bit of something. I can't remember if he's had a buff, so maybe this is different on the JP version, but yeah, they definitely need to buff. He still has Charisma A, man. Come on. Skandar cannot have Charisma A still. <laughs> so sad. Mysterio Heroin X is also one of the most buff units in all history, so I think she's probably solid at this point. Um, if you have her, but I already have her. Uh, this all depends on you. Uh, Amakasu, I know for a fact, is good because I hate him, and all the units I hate um, are super good. That's just the nature of the law of the game. So he's really solid if you pull him, but again, if you're not the biggest fan of him, then that sucks. Jolter fans would really like you to know that Jolter needs a rework of some kind because she is very old and they have not buffed her in any way and she used to be one of the most strongest units in the entire game. She literally would carry you through everything. I don't know if she has. she's literally never had a buff of any kind. She's never had a buff of any kind. I would actually be interested to hear what other people have to say about this because all I've ever seen online is from a lot of people who have Jolter saying they want a Jolter buff. But I don't know if it's because they just want a buff for Jolter or versus she actually needs it. I will say, looking at this one, increase party attack for three turns and then increase the attack of dragon allies. You know, 40% for your, if you have dragon, I don't know. Yeah, I can kind of see her getting a buff of some kind. She did. At least her noble phantasm got buffed. 30 crit stars and inflicts, uh, hmm. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> she probably does need one of some kind. Um... 
Mama Raiko is a solid Berserker AoE -er who is outclassed by two of the other Berserker AoE Buster units, who just so happen to be two of the best units in the entire game, which is Morgan and uh, Arjuna Alter, who I literally just told you at the beginning, hey, they're really solid to go for. So she kind of falls victim to that. They buff her a whole lot, but it's going to be very hard to buff this unit to be on their level because, you know, those units were built stupid good. And this was before Morgan showed up, that she was already getting buffed to potentially, hey, at least she's not she's not number one anymore in terms of efficiency. But hey, at least she's she can stand in some way and she's she could never truly reach Arjuna Alter's crazy heights. Just because no, that's an unfair ask for any unit, <laughs> let alone just her. Kintoki, he's stupid strong uh, single target, so I think he's solid in that regards. <laughs> if you ever see a lot of videos of dudes just <laughs> completely destroying Protea, it's usually with Kintoki in the in the team to inflict crazy amounts of damage. I think this was after his buff. I think in the beginning, um, he wasn't that. He might have always been that, it's just that the buff helped him. It's hard for me to remember, because I, again, I don't have him. My brother might know a little bit more. He's a big fan of Kintoki. Dantes um, is a really good unit. Um, the only problem with him is that usually when you are MP gain um, farming is that in some nodes he might need MP2. I've never needed MP2 with my MP1er, but I also have a crazy selection of like craft essences and like a kaleidoscope at 100%. So not everyone has that. <laughs> so I, I realized that like, hey, not everyone has access to all these crazy units I have. So maybe Dantes might not 100% work for you. But I really do like him. I think he's a cool unit. And yeah, these are the summary of these dudes real quick. Again, real shame that it had to be a 1 in 8 chance for that one. Because it'd be great. Here's the, the, next two, the next two banners. Here's the four star here. The ones that are selected are all the summer units that you see here. Along with uh, Passion Lip, who is limited. And Jaguar, both Jaguar and uh, Christopher Columbus are limited. Uh, in terms of these, the, the first one for the Knights, it is Arthur, it is Musashi, it is Saber um, Archer, it is Ishtar, it is Moriarty, it is Tamamo with Lancer. Um, from the dudes that I know from here specifically, I know Ishtar. Ishtar is really, really good <laughs> because she has... Uh, three turn cooldown, 50% attack up, <laughs> so <laughs> that's just silly. It is delayed by a single turn, but it's okay. Typically, you just do it beforehand, and you'll be fine. I don't use my Ishtar a whole bunch, just because I actually don't like farming with Buster, at least at the moment. Maybe that will change once we get the new support for it. But yeah, she definitely has a whole bunch of use and is super strong. Next, same with Saber Archer. I have her MP5, so this might code things a little bit differently. But I've always felt like even at MP1, she was super strong. I accidentally got her MP5. I was chasing for Marie, my final copy of Marie, and instead I got four copies of Saber. That's also why I'm nev never going to be summoning on this banner, because I don't want a six MP copy. I don't need the coins. I don't need anything else. But yeah, she's really good and solid. Um really strong very good at like looping with all her stuff even if you only use one of her np and then just like a quick and a single arts it's usually enough to get 100 percent pretty easily uh, musashi is the one unit i remember that constantly gets buffed and people wonder why is she getting buffed <laughs> so probably decent enough to get her <laughs> if people are saying please stop buffing her and <laughs> buff some of the other units and speaking of one of the other units that needs buff it is arthur male saber um badly needs buffs he doesn't have i think he finally did get one of these buffs to be almost on the level of the rest and he needs the other actually i think yeah it's this one is the only one that needs to be buff and he might be able to reach the other sabers level because he has the first two skills buffed which are pretty decent it's just that this one needs to be better. The charging your own MP gauge by 20%. To be fair, the, the reason I said that is because regular Saber has that crazy ability that changes all her cards to Buster and stuff. So he needs something to be at least close to their level. And based off of the lore that they have going for him, he could probably use more buffs and stuff like that. N uh, and yeah, I don't know a lot about Moriarty. I don't know a lot about Tamamo Lancer. But I do know that they're both really liked a whole bunch. So, there you go, that's this banner. Next one. One in six chance of getting one of these units is also not bad. You know, it, obviously the best is a one in four. But if you think about it as a one in six, it's not the worst. It's not the worst in the world. 
Next, uh, <laughs> talking about worst chances, this is a one in nine. We have uh, we have Ilya, we have Merlin, we have Da Vinci, we have Cleo, we have Old Hassan or King Mount, the Old Man of the Mountain or King Hassan, Mystery Heroine X Alter, the Pickle Man, Hijikata, um, Kiara, and Melt. Uh, obviously, Merlin is Merlin. He's insanely good. The only problem is is that all the Buster supports work better without him. The, the Merlin is one of the greatest units I've ever seen get asked for buffs. Um, probably because he only gives 20% starting NP. And back in the day, Merlin completely destroyed the game. That's why we have break bars and stuff. But I guess time has caught on to him enough that some of his skills are maybe a little bit lackluster. I don't know. I've always felt like that was really weird cope and people were trying to gaslight uh, Merlin buff. But if you're someone who really thinks that Merlin needs a buff, feel free to say it. I will say it is very, very, very cruel that he does not work with <laughs> one of the your future Buster supports. That makes me feel like they don't want Merlin to return to what he was. So, you know, something to think about. Uh, Ilya is a single target caster. Those are I always feel like those are pretty nice to have um, in case you ever need them. And I think she's one of the stronger ones. It's hard to tell because not a lot of people really hype up the single target <laughs> casters. And the ones that do will get very aggressive if you don't call the one they like <laughs> the best one. <laughs> but anyway, let's go on. Leonardo da Vinci. I've always been a big fan of this da Vinci and I'm always sad that I don't have her. I think she's an AoE um, arts unit. That has the unfortunateness of a lot of AoE arts units. There's actually a decent number of AoE arts units, and she's not one of the better ones, I think. Feel free to tell me if I'm wrong on that one, but I'm almost positive she is not one of the best ones. It's usually Sherazade in my mind. <sighs> not a lot of people talk about that, though, but that's what I think. Cleo, uh, I really like Cleo. Everything about Cleo I think is awesome. I love her design, I love her look. Uh, her skills, she needs a buff. She, the, uh, why, why does she still have every single one of her skill as the base skill? <laughs> That's bad. Even the, uh, they buffed her NP and they said one buff block, it's enough. <laughs> That's insane to me. <laughs> That's why I'm like, don't buff Merlin. He had his time in the sun and then that's why he's in jail. Give the buff to units that actually need it, like Cleo, who was not good when she released and has only aged bad, worse. The old man of the mountain, King of Song, he's a Buster Gorilla assassin. He is the assassin for people who don't like sneaky assassins, who are just here to just Buster to lock them down. Mysterious Heroin X Alter, uh, she's gotten a lot of buffs, similar to the other Mysterious Heroin X, and is pretty solid now. Hitchcock of the Pickle, Pickle Man. Uh, I have him MP2. I'm not a big fan of him, to be honest. He does perfectly fine, though. It's just that uh, now that he has his skill that actually gives him... Uh, this one right here, I think he finally got this, because for the longest time, the thing to get his NP damage at the most is that he needs to have, like, damage dealt to him. The problem is, is that he didn't have built-in guts until this awakening, <laughs> so probably actually usable now. Uh, Kiara is really good. She's a solid arts uh, looper. She used to be bad when she kind of released, but they've given her a lot of buffs, so she's really good now. And Melt is, I want to say, someone who had a little bit of a negative effect on some of her skills, but it was okay, and then they buffed her to remove those, so she's really solid. There you go. And that's that banner. Let's move on to the next two in terms of the limited here. Again, it is all the Summers along with uh, Fujino, and Pravati's not, right? Just to be sure. No, okay. Uh, Donzo... Uh, Queen of Sheba, and Celiari. So there we go. Next banner, we have a 1 in 6 chance of getting potentially Erish Goggle. We have Sigurd, we have Holmes, we have Hokusai, we have Abby, and we have Okita Alter. Every single one of these, uh, except for Sigurd, has a fan base of some kind and are also very solid and good. I think the weakest one is obviously Sigurd, and then I think it would probably be Okita Alter right next to it. And that's just because her kit is weird, so it's very hard to actually fit her into any specific team. That's why. But Hokusai is really good with arts uh, for arts looping. Abby is a really solid uh, buster unit who can tear down berserkers. That's really the best thing about any foreigner is that no matter what, if there's an annoying berserker boss, if you have a foreigner, they're going to be good enough to take it down. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes, 
I don't hear a lot about Sherlock, but I always like Sherlock. I like the way he looks. I like his kind of style. There's not a lot of... There's actually a lot of space for the single... He's. I think he's similar to Shi, Shi Huang Di, uh, the Mothman, Chi, the Chinese Mothman Emperor, where they're kind of similarly built, where they're kind of fighting in that kind of style. So it's a very... It's kind of a little bit more of like a challenge quest kind of unit. Not really one you're going to go take farming, but for challenge nodes and for story sequences, you can definitely bring them along and help them with that. And it's always nice to have that kind of unit be a ruler and usually take less damage from them. And Irish Goggle, there's nothing I can say about Irish Goggle. I think she later on gets a tan version. Yeah. Yeah, that's a reason enough to summon right there. <laughs> I don't need to go over anything else. She's obviously a huge fan. She's got the, probably the biggest fan base out of all of these six units, actually. <laughs> People are still waiting. She's the only unit here who got memes so hard she got into... She's one of the first memes, actually. Because originally Irish Goggle was not... Uh, supposed to be a unit she was like one of the dreaded skeleton bosses and then over time they fi eventually finally added her because they're like when when is she when did they add yeah Ish we have ishtar that's great but when is she coming that'd be great if she was here and then they finally added her they had to like do an entire story sequence for it to make sense too <laughs> it's a hell of a thing but that's this banner next one we have uh a saber altar writer summer uh ivan the terrible nero summer uh, Semiramis and Scotty. This is a pretty decent one in five chance for Scotty. Scotty may not be good at, be as good as some of the newer supports, specifically for Buster and for Arts, but she's still the best quick one. And I think in Japan and next year she'll have some. Uh, there'll be a new Scotty. So if you actually just want to wait a year for Summer Scotty, who is the <laughs> the quick the quick support again, you can definitely do that. But you know. It's nice to have Scotty as well. If you want to mess around with quick stuff, you do need her. Uh, in the rest of these units, I really like Summer Nero because she has a skill that feels like a boss skill. She has one of her buffs right here, which I can show. Yeah, ignore zone defense classes, advantage against all classes for three turns. It's a hilarious skill. I don't think they've ever given that to anyone else <laughs> because it's a very silly thing to just have. Ivan doesn't get talked about a whole bunch, but I think he's neat. And he's just a giant mammoth man. And he's a berserker as well, I believe. Yeah, giant berserker mammoth man. What's not to love about giant berserker mammoth man? And yeah, that's basically it for these. Obviously, Scotty's kind of the breakthrough one of them, of the, of the five here. But the rest of them are fine. I don't think I hear very much about Sammy Ramos, but that's the, the trials and tribulations of being, I think, a buster AoE assassin. Yeah, just not a lot of... Not a lot of use for one of those, <laughs> to be 100% real with you. I actually don't think of... I don't think there's many... Actually, if I look, because again, I am on NA, so I, I try to not think about certain units until they're released. Is there any AoE assassin? I think there's at least one that I can think of. The shooting technically is one, but she's not the greatest at looping. Um, same kind of goes with Nidoquist, because her insta-death screws with what she does. I wish Ushi was better at being able to uh, fast grind. Um, Okita also has the same issue where she accidentally stuns herself, but they eventually have to free her of it. I guess Ko Koaski a light. I forget that she's technically a um, a hard hitting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Her for five stars. It's her, and it's for Buster. And I think for uh, Hogan over here is it for Quick. And the rest of these I'll worry about when I have to potentially summon for them. Except for the free-to-play Valkyrie. That's a different story and subject. But anyway, let's move on. Okay, for this one, the limited fours and the threes of the fours, it's all the summer units that you see here, along with the angriest man of India and Miyu, who is limited. And also, I forgot, but she's here too, Concert Yu, who's the... One of the worst, I think, of the story locks. I think, anyway. I think they've buffed her. I can't remember if they've actually buffed her enough for it to make a difference, though. Um, and yeah, Red Hair and uh, Asplesis are both limited. Good ones, too. I wish I had I wish I had more of them. I hope to get more of them, as because I am summoning for this banner right here, specifically. But let's look at this other one. Benny Enma, uh, Jean uh, Summer, the, the Mothman, the Chinese Emperor Mothman, BB Summer... Uh, King Protea and Demon King Nobunaga. A 
pretty, and again, all the GSSRs are pretty solid. There's usually typically one big weak one in there, and then one of the other ones is strong. Um, Demon King Nobunaga definitely needs a lot to be built up, but she's not that bad. If you have her brother at NP5 and you have that, that should be enough to make up with some for some of her lacking stuff, but, you know, she has that at least. <laughs> Uh, if you don't have any of that, then unfortunately, then you're gonna have to wait until he comes back in some day. I've always liked Mini Enma. I don't know if many people actually like using her. I think I've actually seen a decent amount of negative stuff around her, but I think she's neat the way she supports and is also a single target for a very specific, um, anti-specific stuff. Uh, Jean Archer Summer is a fantastic, uh, AoE looper for arts. One of the best ones for sure. Um, King Protea is used in a lot of like I actually don't know a lot about King Protea now that I think about it I want King Protea because I want her to hang out with Bunyan <laughs> that's really the only care that I have for King Protea so there you go she's a cool unit regardless of anything I think that is fair enough a lot of these units a lot of the time I want them just because I want them <laughs> not for actual in-game purposes of using them <laughs> Uh, Shi Huang Di is basically, like I said, for uh, Sherlock. Kind of used in a similar manner, but I actually don't know enough about him either. BB Summer has a really fun skill where she can lock in command codes for three turns. Um, which is the lock in the cards. So if you want just a never-ending loop of one specific unit just doing three buster chains, like for example Super Orion after he gets his buff, you can totally do that and you can just keep on going and going and going. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think she's a super fun unit and I always enjoy using her. Um, the one thing that's negative about her is that she doesn't do enough damage on her AoE. Uh, and that can be copied by getting more copies of BB Summer. <laughs> Or grailing her or doing 2,000 foe or something like that. But that is definitely a negative for her, for sh to be sure. Um, yeah, of this banner, I would really like these two right here. In terms of what, if I was going to be summing, that's the two I would want the most. But it's not a bad of the bunch. I actually don't have any of the units here except for BB Summer. And I wouldn't mind having another MP copy. I think this is a solid unit, uh, solid banner for sure. But again, it probably varies for people for people. There's probably some people who are not on the same level of me going like, I just want a friend for Bunyan <laughs> for King, to have for King Protea. They probably wouldn't follow me on that one. But you know, it is what it is. Next banner right here. This one is insane. It has Simi, uh, Simiye Reigns. It has a Shikabu. It has Kama and has Arjuna Altar. The big, big get here is obviously Arjuna Altar. And then the second biggest get is Kama, who is insanely good. The only she would be the main focus of any banner if it was not for the fact that Arjuna Altar was on it. Insane, absolutely insane. Shikabu is again an AOE caster, um, which is pretty. I'm pretty sure it's caster. I have to. I think it is because it has. She shares it with Shirazade. Yeah, there we go. And Reigns is a support that gets buffed. I think of an original kit, it wasn't good enough, but eventually they do buff her to make her super solid at being able to. Support, which is cool, and she's also a different kind of support because she is a uh, writer, as you can see here. Um, this is a solid banner. This is the one I'm going to be summoning on because I don't have uh, three of these units, and the other one that I do have is Kama, and I wouldn't mind an NP2 copy of Kama because I think that'd be sick because she already <laughs> just make her deal more damage. But I'm also a big fan of Shikabu in general. I like her character. I like her stuff. Reigns, I also like Reigns a decent amount because I'm a big fan of Waver and this is related to Waver, so I wouldn't mind having her. And Arjuna Altar is dumb, broken, good, god man. Even in a world where, technically speaking, a lot of players feel like Morgan has more utility, they can't deny that Arjuna Altar is 100% stronger than her <laughs> in terms of pure raw strength. Which, for some people, is more important than having any kind of usability or utility to them. <laughs> Again, it's up to the player themselves. Next banner. Okay, this one is pretty simple. Every single one of these four stars is limited or story locked in some way. And Marticardo is the only one who is not, and he's a three. Next, this banner is another four one at one in four chance of getting one of these units. Saber Astolfo, Say, Super Orion, and Rhymeless Queerness. This is another crazy good banner, especially if you want Super Orion. Super Orion is insane. It sometimes feels like a cheat code when you use him. I have an MP5 
like I said, Archer's single target, and sometimes he does almost as much damage as her, it feels like, with his Buster crits. It's kind of crazy how they've built this man to be just this insanely strong. Uh, I, I know why they did that, but it still feels like kind of a mistake for how strong he is. Really worth it, I would say. Uh, Romulus Quirinus, after they fixed him, there was a bug related to him where he wasn't doing as much damage, but they fixed it after Samakiara had that buff. I uh, had that, um, had that, um, had that bug, excuse me. So he should be working as good, and I think he's a pretty solid unit, and he also has a fun anti-Roman, um, trait to kind of mess around with, especially because there is a unit who gives everyone a Roman who also hates the Romans, which is pretty funny. And don't think about it too much beyond that. <laughs> Saying, uh, I really like her in terms of AoE um, farming. I've used her a decent amount. It's unfortunate that she released right near the end of me using Quick because that was around the time that I had been already Quick farming for close to two years. And then Castoria came out and I wanted to try something different. So I actually don't use her that much, but I always super, whenever I get the chance or she's on rate up of some kind, or maybe I'm just like farming for fun, I'll definitely use her. I think she's a fun unit to use and very colorful and cool. In a Stolfo, Saber Stolfo, he gets buffed to be a little bit better, but he's definitely the weakness, the weakest of the four. At least I would say so. Probably some others would give it to say, but I think I have to give it to a Stolfo here. But I still think he's pretty solid post buff, um, and a decent chance. So unless you super hate a Stolfo, still a one in four chance of getting Super Ryan is insanely good. And finally, we have the next one. This one has... This one's also kind of insane, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> a 1 in 6 chance of getting, either, of getting Da Vinci Lily, uh, Summer Musashi, Summer uh, Ruler Alter. No, not Ruler Alter. Summer Artoria Ruler. There we go. Space Ishtar, Voyager, and Yang. Yang is, I think, probably the weakest of the bunch here. Um... But she's still pretty solid against someone who, if you're specifically, again, again, if there's ever a situation where you're fighting <laughs> berserkers, of by default, a foreigner will always be good to deal with them, no matter what. <laughs> and that's what I use her for specifically, because I have her. Voyager is a really, really good uh, quick AoE unit. I think he's the best one at the moment, and they released him right before Castoria, which is why you don't see a lot of people talk about him, but I think he's really solid really good he has a lot of stuff to his kit that is nice space ishtar ever since she released she has never received any form of a buff or anything because she doesn't need it and i don't see a future where she'll ever need it um she was hands down the best um arts looper until this summer where summer comma comes out and then it was kind of a back and forth of like in some situations she's better than the next situation the other one's better and that was a decent enough debate that went on for a year and then Fago themselves decided to just end the debate and say actually this new abuki that we just released is the best of all of them and summer abuki is now the best <laughs> arts one but that doesn't mean that space ishtar is any less valid because she still is insanely good as she was day one uh, thank God we l play a PvE game and don't have to worry about PvP ever, which is nice. Summer Musashi, she's the actual, even though I have Space Star, she's the actual, um, arts looper that I use the most, just because she always has type effective against most units. <laughs> There's a very rare exception that she doesn't. She has a role, I really like her animation. A lot of her skills help her out with the looping, and if you're ever in a situation where you're in, a, where you're in some kind of solo fight and you need her to pick up the pieces, she has built-in guts, so she can at least survive a little bit, and that's pretty nice. Not bad at all, not bad. And Da Vinci Rider. I really like her a decent amount. I, again, I kills me on the inside that I don't have any of the Da Vinci units because I really like Da Vinci. I think she's a solid AoE writer. It sounds like uh, in terms of AoE writers, there are better ones now, but definitely when she released, I think she was hands down the best and now she's kind of like, not the best, but still insanely good. She's in that level <laughs> where really not much has changed and she's still super usable and still super good. And so you don't have to worry about that again. If you're missing... Oh, yeah, and I forgot this one. Uh, <laughs> I have her MP2, actually, for this one. Uh, the one negative I have to say about her is that she kind of, like, doesn't do as much damage as I would like. But I still think it's pretty fun to have the ability to kind of just, like, mess around with command codes. I use her a whole bunch for Summer. 
uh, for grinding nodes, which is pretty fun. Uh, I try and make it so that the, the nodes themselves at the end, if there's a single target unit, like I use her for clearing out the turn two that has three. And then on the last turn, when there's only one, I use her final ability to make it so that the unit that has a single target NP can also get all the cards that come with it, or if they have an AOE one, and then they can kind of handle it from there, because I think with her abilities, it is possible to get like a lot of crit stars, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I might be thinking of another unit. Well, my bad on that one, but still. And with a lot of like Buster stuff coming up, maybe I'll finally be able to use her. Again, all this stuff that I'm speaking specifically, I have to mention because I don't have Merlin. So a lot of the Buster units for me are kind of me trying to figure it out without a Merlin. <laughs> but thankfully with a new Buster support, I'm definitely looking forward to using mine, which like I said is NP2. Um, she has a 40% NP charger, which is decent enough, I think, to get her um, up and running. And the cooldown is short. Yes, six turns. Yeah, it's short enough that she'll be able to use it again with the uh, both bitches giving her skill cooldowns and stuff. So decent, good selection again. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, this, we are finally at the final two banners, everyone. Let's go. Uh, Hajime is not limited. He is in fact limited. Okay, just to be sure. I, even though I did this video last time, I can't remember. All the summer, all the summer units are limited. He's limited. Barg is limited. Soon is not limited. Um, the brand new Babo Sif and uh, Bargist over here is limited. And yeah, there we go. And then in terms of some of the limited, I think all the limited threes are on here. That are yes, all of them are. Okay, so this banner, this banner would be. Oh, this banner is also kind of insane. As uh, the banners get progressively better as you go on, <laughs> I think after um, this banner, a lot of the banners become much better because they're filled with new units only. Uh, inside this banner, we have Ibuki, we have Maramasa, we have the brand new Melisane, we have Himiko, we have the Pervert, we have Summer Kiara, we have Van Gogh, and we have Summer Abbey. Uh, this banner would be insane for a chance of getting. Any of these four units right here, except for the fact Summer Abbey is on this banner. And again, I have to say this again. Don't ask me why I have two NP. I was going for another unit when I got my Abbey's NP2, but she just doesn't have enough stuff at the moment. <laughs> if I remember right, even the JP players were asking for them to please buff Summer Abbey, and they really don't like buffing Summer units. I think there's only been like a handful of them over the years. And usually never new ones either. So they are very, very against ever buffing summer units. Usually, typically they think once you we release one, they're basically done. Um, and they'll never get buffed again, but whatever. Um, Muramasa is hands down one of the best AoE units in the entire game. Like, there's no denying it. Remember what I said about when the more I hate a unit, the better they become? Muramasa is at times one infinity. He is one of the best units in the entire game. There's no denying it. There's no hiding it. There's no running from it. Even the, even with how much I do not like him, I still kind of want him for that exact reason alone because it sounds like he's just stupid to use with. I've had him. I've had people before tell me that like, oh yeah, his AOE strikes hit like a single target sometimes. <laughs> it's harder than some of my single target units. And I'm like, that's just stupid. That's just dumb. <laughs> and here's the other thing. Why this man is probably a little bit troll. It really is for high rewards, high gains. I'll say again, because if you see the saber <laughs> symbol, it also means you have a chance of getting a Buki Doji. And Abuki, unfortunately, is not on the same level of Muramasa. No one is, but it's just unfortunate that they've released around the same time. And they're both, I, uh, no, thankfully, Abuki is Buster, so kind of they run in different circles. But it's still insane to me that they had this man in the waiting, and then they released Ibuki Doji and then thought, eh, it's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> like, it's insane how much better he is than her. I still find a lot of use for her. I use her all the time for farming and stuff. And she's solid. I can't wait to actually use her with the when Vich comes out. She's definitely going to be one of the units I'm going to be using to try and test them out and use them and have fun with them. Melisane just came out and I have an entire video saying, holy shit, she's so good. So good that enough people are warranted summoning before anniversary, I think. Summer Kiara is a uh, fantastic, one of the better arts. There's so many good arts loopers, but she's definitely one of them. Super strong, super solid. I 
in terms of the ones that I use right now, it's typically Summer Musashi, and then it's Summer Kiara, and then finally it's Space Ishtar. And usually I use Space Ishtar whenever I'm feeling like the node is being very annoying, and it's like bigger buffer enemies. Because the one thing about Summer Kiara is that it takes a little bit of build up to do some of her more fun stuff that she does, where Space Ishtar just goes, eh, just get that shit down right now. Uh, Doman, aka the Pervert Man, one of the best units out there. He's insane for quick, um, which makes me sad because, like I said, he's. <laughs> I really don't like him. I think the only unit here that I don't like more. I think there's only one unit in the world that I hate that is not good. And it is uh, Christopher Columbus, and he's a three star. I think if, I might hate this guy, Pervert Man, more than I hate Muramasa, and I hate um, Christopher Columbus. I really don't like him. He's, but to be fair, you're supposed to not like him. He's a villain, right? That's his entire job. <laughs> so he's doing a good job at it. Don't take it any. Don't take it too personal. Actually, don't take anything I said about Muramasa either. I'm just mentioning it here. I'll. <laughs> It's my own personal dumb hangups. Don't worry about me and my stupid thoughts. Himiko, I really like Himiko a whole bunch. She's an uh, Buster supporter that has the unfortunateness of not being enough of a Buster supporter to make up for the lack of what Merlin does. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. I really hope that with um, because I'm someone who's not going to be summoning for Oberon that maybe I can use my Himiko finally to do some other crazy buster stuff. It's not going to be on the same level as Oberon obviously because Oberon is just stupid crazy good. If they had given Himiko some kind of form of MP charge I think that would make her much better and use with buster just because it's so rough trying to do anything with buster with not a lot of um, NP charge. It's the one thing that holds a lot of things back, and that's why I've I never liked Merlin, because 20% is just not enough, unless you're killing right then and there and not trying to loop, and you don't have like a backup waiver or anything. So yeah, that's this banner. A 1 in f 8 chance of potentially getting Muramasa, or getting Melusane, or getting Summer Kiara, or getting Doman. I never mentioned Van Gogh because I don't have Van Gogh and I'm sad that I never got Van Gogh, but I think Van Gogh is pretty good and pretty fun. Uh, she has a very interesting kind of mechanic to her that I think is neat, and I think more units could probably do with that. I don't know how it is for the general audience of Fago, but I really like it when a unit can do something silly or different, even if for the most part I use a lot of the AoE units. <laughs> for farming and stuff. I really do like it when a unit has something silly and different to them. I think it's neat. I think more units like that are always good. As long as they're perfectly balanced and they are able to do that silly thing in a very effective way. Like for example, a unit that has a very uh, different kind of st style of fighting is Theno, but it's bad. <laughs> it's a bad way of fighting. As long as it's good. That's it. And finally, this banner, which has a 1 in 5 chance of getting a Castoria and or a Morgan. Miss Crane, Karen, and uh, Ushi Alter, I won't say much about them because these are the two main ones. If you're summoning on this banner, it's because you want one of these two units. And if you want any of these three units specifically, then you are a hyper fan dedicated to you, and I hope that you get them. <laughs> I really do wish you get the unit that you want. And that goes to anyone in general, that I always hope that the unit that you get on the GSSR is the one you get. And all that stuff. But yeah, Morgan is insane. Castoria is insane. I have entire videos dedicated to both to go over how good they are. Uh, you don't need me to go over it again, but just know. I think it's worth a 1 in 5 chance of getting Castoria. If this is the only... If you don't have Castoria, this is the banner to go to. And if you do have Castoria, then it's Arjuna Altar. And if you do have Arjuna Altar, I would say Super Orion. And if you have Super Orion, I would go back to this one and say, maybe you want Morgan. And if you don't want Morgan... Then it kind of goes, uh, it's a toss-up for whatever you want at that point. So, yeah. After going all over all that, here's the question. Which one of these should you summon for? I said at the beginning, but let me say this again here at the end, because I feel like this always gets kind of lost in a lot of this stuff. I never feel like you should go for a specific banner, because it's the best. Even though I think... For what my box is specifically looking like, this is the best banner. I don't think that that's true for you. I think for the most part, I think you need to look over a lot of this stuff and look at your box and ask yourself, which one of these is absolutely the best for me? And which one of these would I be happy with? 
Um, the reason I say that is that I feel like a lot of people get bummed out around GSSR because they end up pulling the fi- a five star that they just straight up don't want. And I think for the most part, it's going to be very hard to combat that, but it'd be better if you pulled on a banner where you knew for a fact the worst unit on that you would still be happy to have. And I feel that's the best that you can kind of do for yourself. Like, if you're a big fan of Gilgamesh and absolutely love Gilgamesh, but you hate with a passion Shiki, you should never summon on this. Because if you get that Shiki, it's going to ruin your entire day. And that's it. And if, But if you have a banner like this one, for example, and you're like, oh, I'm a big fan of Semiramis, but I'm actually a really big fan of Scotty, of the, both the Summer Units and Ivan... Like, uh, like this is a banner where you look at it and go like, ah, oh, I wish I could get Semiramis, and you don't get Semiramis, but you get Ivan, and you go, well, I still really like Ivan, so I'll take this. I'll be happy with it. I think that ends up being a better banner, even though I think, than this one, even though I think there are better units on this one. It's because you hate this one so much, specifically, that it ruins your entire day if you get them, that you shouldn't summon for it. Um, that's another reason why I really don't want to summon on uh this banner over here even though it has a potentially any of these banners because christopher columbus is on it um i would summon for this one potentially but like i said there's so many us that if i got an mp3 summer abbey i would just be totally bummed with the game that's close i'd be so incredibly sad if i got an mp3 summer abbey <laughs> I'd also be also bummed if I got Columbus on this one. So for that point, even though the highs of me getting potentially Lancelot or Muramasa are there, and getting one of the four-star limits that I want from here, like maybe Sunak, who I don't have, or uh, Hajime over here. Yeah, that's the best-case scenario, but when the worst-case scenario just makes me bummed with the game and not want me to continue playing, then the obvious answer is, is that I should look for a banner where I can find the happy medium. This one, I think, is the most happy medium for me, because even if I have... Uh, even if I don't get the unit I want, which is Arjuna Altar, and I get one of these three, I'm still pretty happy about it, even though I have Kama already, and I could get her MP2. I would still be happy with an MP2, because it just makes her better at what she already does, and that's fine with me. Like, for example, I don't want an MP2 of Castoria, because that would suck for me. I don't like any support units to get MP2. <laughs> Only single target units I would accept as having that, or units I really love. That's really the basics of it. And then I also look at like the four star selection. And I go like, okay, even though Miu is the weakest of these, and same for Concert U, I wouldn't mind getting them in this situation. Just because I'm just like, oh yeah, they're weak, but I don't have them, so I'd be happy to have them. And that's kind of what you have to look at when you're actually choosing to go with the GSSR. And that's all I kind of have to say on that. And finally, with that, the video can end. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I hope this found help. I this helped you in some kind of way. Um, this video ended up being way longer than I ever intended it to be. God damn. I was trying to make it shorter. <sighs> Such is the case sometimes. But I, again, I hope this was helpful in some kind of way. If it was, feel free to tell me. What? What the hell am I talking about? This is what happens when I talk to myself for like 47 minutes. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Tell me what you plan to do for GSSR. If you have any specific things to say about these units so that I know for next time when I'm talking about them, free, 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 please feel free to tell me. I always like hearing about new things, even though I complained about the Tesla thing. It's better for me to know Tesla is good and broken than for me to continue giving misinformation about a unit. Like, for example, I was saying I don't know how Percival stacks up against um, Fionn McCool. But then someone came in and said, it's like, hey, I play JP, and let me tell you, I really like Percival, and I think he's better. And he gave me specific examples, like, oh yeah, his MP gain is kind of crazy. He's actually really good at farming in, like, two nodes. And I was like, mm, you know, I didn't know that. And I'm when I have Percival, which I actually was able to pull Percival, because I did one summon uh, <laughs> on the Lancelot banner in solidarity with my brother, and I was able to get Percival. So I was like, I will gladly try him out when he comes out. Because if I didn't, then I would just continue not using him and kind of figuring it out from there. So like I said, always feel free to tell me whatever, especially if it's a unit you care a whole bunch about and you want me to just know for telling more people going forward, I will gladly retain that information. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.